Hi everybody, what's up? Um, thanks for tuning in into this video. Um, my name is uh, Che. I'm the Source Cloud Practice Director uh, within PolSource. Uh, PolSource is a uh, global boutique uh, sales software partner. In today's video, um, we are going to share with you our thoughts around the uh, Salesforce Winter 21 release, uh, and then mainly focus around the, the, the Source Cloud features. Um, I'm doing that together with uh, Itacho Vera and Andrew Artemis. Ignacio Ferrer will uh, show you all the nice things around uh, Einstein for Service. Uh, he will also show you a, a short demo around it. And Andrew will share his top leadership around the other Service Cloud features. So I hope you will enjoy it. And uh, let's start with uh, Ignacio. Thank you very much. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Ignacio Ferrer and I work as business analyst at Poisers. Today, we are very excited to share with you some of the key new features for this upcoming Winter 21 release. So, let's start. Winter 21 introduces great improvements on Einstein chatbots. Admins will now be able to create a bot from templates that include popular actions such as create a case, create a lead, or look up an order all with optimized conversational text and clues, so you can customize it and go live faster than ever. Let's see the body story template in action. Go to your setup menu and type Einstein Bots. In the Einstein Bot setup page is where your bot building journey begins. Let's say I'm an admin and my agents have been complaining that they're spending a lot of time answering customer questions regarding their order status. So I would like to build a bot for my organization that allows my customers to look, to look up the status of their existing orders. I start by clicking on new to create a new bot. Now I see a brand new option in Winter 21 to start from a template instead of starting from scratch. I go ahead and select the templates option. Now I can personalize my bot by giving it a name. Let's call it Pulsar Spot. You can see that the name I choose is used in the greeting message the bot is going to send to the user on the left. I can also select the language for the bot, which I will keep as English for now. But as you can see, Salesforce supports a lot of different languages for bot conversations. Next, I configure the use cases I want my bot to handle. These use cases correspond to the initial menu items my bot will present to my users. I can select and deselect use cases and the menu items will update automatically as you can see here on the left. For this demo, I'm going to leave the default selections though I'm only interested on the last menu item. Check the status of an order. To preview my bot, I need to link it to an existing embedded service deployment, which is configured separately. Luckily, I already have it on setup, so I'll go ahead and select it. It's called Service Sender Agents. And now I'm ready to deploy my bot. As soon as I hit proceed, a process in the background kicks off. And once done, then I can click on Finish. Voila! My bot has just been created, saving me all the time it could take to build this bot from scratch. I can start previewing the actual conversation my customers will see when they are interacting with the bot. At the same time, I can see the underlying configuration here on the left-hand side that produces that conversation experience and seeing the bot preview. Let's go ahead and activate this bot. Now I'm going to assume the role of a customer who would like to know the status of his order.
And I'm going to select the check the status of an order menu item so I can get the status of the order quickly. The bot asks me if I have the order number handy. I look it up before so I know and say yes. And now it asks me to enter the other number. I go ahead and do so. And just like that, the bot responds with the order status and the amount. The order number I just provided was mapped to the order object in Salesforce, and the bot used a pre-configured standard flow that comes with the template bar to look at the status as well as the amount. The bot asked me if I want to change anything in the order, but for now, I'm satisfied, so I can go ahead and say no. And then, I end the chat. So to summarize, in minutes we have just built a bot that can automatically perform lookups and answer customer questions on order status. Next, let's see how quickly we can get up and running a service app with a new service setup assistant. Winter 21 introduces us the service setup assistant an out-of-the-box service app that is optimized with layouts and configurations, making it easier to get started with Service Cloud. Within a few minutes and only a few steps, service teams can begin supporting customers and closing spaces quickly. To get started, open Setup and navigate into the Service Setup Assistant. I click on this towel turns off the service app and lets the assistant go to work. Within moments, you have a service app preloaded. To finish the service setup, you need to complete two more steps. First is setting up email to case. Once you add your support email address, click here to generate your custom email address. To set up email forwarding to Salesforce, copy this generated email address and enter it in your email settings provider. The last step is adding your agents to the Service Cloud app. You can do so easily by clicking on Add Users. And then entering the following information, the email of the user you wish to add, the username, their first name, last name, and the profile and the queue that you want to relate that user with. All done, let's take a look at this new Service Cloud app. Now we have a pre-configured Service Cloud app ready for admins to focus on customizations that deliver immediate value. Winter 21 also comes with pre-built productivity tools for your service app. There are three time-saving macros pre-built here. Escalate case, close case, and request more information which are ready to run. In addition, there are five pre-built quick tests to help agents respond to customers faster and also three pre-built flows in the actions and recommendations component. Create a case, reset passwords, and verify identity. Hello everyone, this is Andrew Artemis, a Salesforce Solution Architect from Pulsource. Um, firstly, thank you Nessio for that wonderful presentation on how easy it is to use the chatbot templates in order to, to set up a chatbot within a matter of minutes and just clicks, unlike what it used to be where you have to be fumbling around to set something up. Um, but just remember with all these great new features that are becoming easier and slicker to use, just remember always to plan and test and test and test again before you go to production. Um, nothing worse than something that's half-baked 
hasn't been properly tested, doesn't really work well for the end user, um, and also falls over straight away. So with that said, there's loads of stuff across the whole Salesforce platform that within this Winter 21 release, which came out a couple of days ago. Um, so just get your head around all of that. Um, it's going to take you a while because it's, cause like we've, nowadays, this release is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, which is great. Um, but coming back to the Service Cloud Winter 21 release, I'm just going to pick on a couple of things. One being the, the removal of the Ref ID, or, or they, they no longer need to use the Ref ID, Thread ID within the subject or the body of the email, um, because that could often be removed by users, by corporate signatures and that kind of stuff, disclaimers and so on. So then what would happen is that the email would come back into Salesforce and create a brand new case, which was always annoying. Um, but so now Salesforce are going to start using the email header. So when they do reply, um, it's going to become more stable, more secure. So the fact is that the read, Salesforce will read the header and they'll know exactly where, where that um, email needs to be routed to onto what case and so on, which is great. Just little things like that are always a good thing to, in the long term um, to see you know, these little changes. Um, now, the only other thing I really want to pick on before I let you go is the, is the, is the, the beta or beta release of, of, of the um, Microsoft Teams connection. I'm not seeing it yet. I don't even know what that what, what it looks like yet. But I'm interested to know more, learn more about it because, especially on the back end of last year, when Microsoft and Salesforce announced that new partnership, whereby um, the main part of it was that they're going to look at marketing cloud basically going onto Azure um, as 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 as, 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 as being replatformed in that way. Don't actually know what that means and what it's going to look like, but more interesting to see about that in the future. Now, but at the moment, for this release, um, yeah, seeing that Microsoft Teams connection in pl play would be great to, would be great for businesses to seamlessly have sharing of information of, of, of data within Salesforce and be able to collaborate that within their Microsoft suite product. So that's always great to see because in the past, Salesforce has always been battling with Microsoft um for you know setting up stable connections around outlook and then there's a, in the past there was like these all these plugins and so on for that were made available for um excel and, and office products um but hopefully this will be seeing more and more integrations with less hassle <laughs> for our solution and development and technical architects and delivery teams so um yeah with that said, I hope you found that's interesting. Again, like I said, go look at the release notes, go and have a bit of play of new functionality. Um, yeah, have a good day. Cheers, bye-bye. Many thanks, Ignacio, for the demo, and many thanks as well, Andrew, for your thoughts around the Search Cloud features. So we are coming to an end of, of this video. I hope that you all enjoyed this video. Uh, please leave a comment or uh, give some likes to the video. And if you have any questions, you can also email us on hello at pollsters.com. I hope to see you in the next future. And thanks again. Bye-bye.